Hi, I'm John Monte from Pixum, and I'm going to review the camera setup menu of a Seawolf camera. Um, I've got a little reference camera here that I'll use uh, for demonstration purposes. It's got the new 7.4 firmware on it. So this uh, setup menu is a little different than a camera that has uh, older firmware, like 7.3 firmware. Um, to bring up the menu, I'm going to push the center button here on the back of the camera for a second or two. and It'll bring up the camera setup menu and I'll go through each of these items. The first one is the type of lens, the lens select, um, and uh, the camera will default to a DC iris lens, although you can also set it for a manual iris lens. Uh, that means on uh, you know, very uh, bright scenes, uh, the exposure control of the camera will not rely on a mechanical DC iris. Of course, Seawolf is a wide dynamic range camera, so it's, uh, it's very effective even with a manual iris lens. Uh, what I found is that Many uh, tiny uh, microdome type uh, cameras using Seawolf will have a manual iris lens, and this will already be set up in the factory. Um, bigger domes, uh, uh, like vandal domes, tend to have a, a DC iris lens. The next uh, menu item is AGC and shutter. AGC is uh, automatic gain control. That's how you uh, adjust the amount of gain the camera has in very low light and also the type of slow shutter that it uses. So I'll go ahead and push the enter button here, and you can see there's a menu underneath. It's the AGC shutter setup menu. There's a few items here. The first one is the daytime AGC. Uh, that has a default value of 42 dB, which is a lot of gain. Um, that means that in low, low light, if the camera is set to stay in day mode or color for 24 hours, um, you can get a maximum of 42 dB gain. You'll see that you can even crank it up to 60 dB, which uh, very few people want to do that. But if you really, really, really want a lot of gain at night, you can crank that up. If the camera is set to night mode or day-night auto mode, it will switch into night mode, black and white, when it gets very dark. And you can see that the default value of the gain is even, is even greater. It's 48 dB, which is a tremendous amount of, uh, of gain. That's a new feature on the 7.4. You can set the maximum day AGC and night AGC independently, and they're also defaulting to very high values, much higher than a camera with 7.3. For example, most 7.3 firmware cameras have a maximum gain setting of only 30 dB or 36 dB, even on the highest setting. So you can see that the new firmware, the 7.4, it's much better in low light, and so the default gain is set to higher, both the day mode in color and the night mode in black and white. Uh, the next menu here is the shutter limit. Um, this is the slow shutter. Some people call this DSS, digital slow shutter. Uh, the default value is 8x. That means that the digital slow shutter is going to go all the way to 8x in very, very dark scenes. Now that is going to cause motion artifacts if there's motion in the scene that the camera is looking at. If you prefer to get fewer motion artifacts, you can adjust this down, like to only 4x, or to only 2x, or even just 1x in low light. And that will have uh, you know, typical um, motion artifacts, even in very dark scenes. Now, there are two other um, adjustments to the shutter limit. One of them is 1 over 200 seconds, and one of them is 1 over 100 seconds. These are new modes that were added to the 7.4 firmware. And therefore, for example, uh, license plate applications, where you want to limit the longest exposure even during daytime so that you reduce the motion blur of the camera. So um, those are new modes that are available in 7.4, um, which uh, basically are have a faster exposure than a standard camera that has like, you know, 1 over 33 uh, seconds or, you know, 33 millisecond, that type of, that type of thing. So it defaults to 8x, slow shutter. So I'll go back to the Setup menu here. Again, I'll push enter. The next uh, menu is white balance. There's a couple of functions here. The first one is ATW, which is auto tracking, white balance. Um, the camera keeps track of color temperature and it's going to track 24 hours a day and it's going to produce, uh, you know, beautiful color that you can use. Um, you can also set the different uh, flicker reduction modes. One of them is called CRR2, color roll reduction number two. That requires a, a DC lens to implement, and it will uh, help with the roll from modulated light sources like fluorescent lights or mercury vapor lights 
or modulated LED lights. There's another version of that called CRR. It has a different algorithm, performs a different way, and it also can reduce color roll. And you can select between them to see which one works best for your application. Um, there's the, op the option of doing push to set auto white balance, AWB. So this is the same as push to set. That's why it's got a little return character here. That means that when, when you have a scene that the color temperature is never going to change for the life of the camera, you want to put a piece of white paper in front of it, part of the scene, maybe a quarter of the scene will have a piece of white reference, white pixels there, and then you'll hit the enter and it will adjust the white balance. But you have to be careful setting AWB because once you do set it, the camera will not track changes in white balance. So it's typically good for scenes that never change for 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, like for example in a casino. Um, the next menu is a WDR, Wide Dynamic Range, and you see there's the two dots, which means it has a menu beneath it. I'm going to push the Enter button again and bring up the WDR Setup menu. The first one is the control. This is the amount of maximum dynamic range the camera has. And you see that you can scroll through High, which gives you a maximum of 120 dB dynamic range. Um, you can have Medium, which is more like a maximum of 102, 105 dB dynamic range. Um, you can change that to normal, which is more like 85, 90 dB of dynamic range. Or finally, you can change it to low, which is uh, approximately 75 dB of dynamic range. Still more dynamic range than a standard camera, but still low from Seawolf standards because Seawolf is such a wide dynamic range camera. Now you might ask, why would you want low dynamic range on a Seawolf camera? And it turns out there's good reason, because sometimes um, you don't have a need for wide dynamic and the camera will have a, a nicer, more punchy image if you set it to medium or normal or low. So it really is just a matter of taste, uh, what you set it to. There's also the exposure preference. You can have a case where the dynamic range of a scene is greater than the maximum dynamic range the Seawolf uh, camera is set up to capture. If that's the case, you can choose whether the shadows in the scene are more important to you or the highlights are more important to you. If the highlights are more important, keep it set to highlights, that's the default mode. If the shadows are more important, change it to shadows and then make sure you save the change. So highlight is what you'd expect, what a lot of people would expect from a wide dynamic range camera, so the default is highlights. Now finally there's the BLC, which is the, a different way of basically saying the same thing. BLC has an on menu and an off. You turn BLC on when you just got to get the details of someone's face when they're heavily backlit like if they're standing in a building lobby and there's a bunch of glass behind them on a bright sunny day. A lot of times that'll turn the face dark. So what you can do in that case is you turn on BLC and you see there's a couple of dots here. That means there's a menu beneath this. So I'm going to hit the enter button again and it's going to let me adjust the shadow gain. And the shadow, this is a very handy um, thing to have because this will crank up the amount of gain that is put onto the shadow. So it'll bring the face detail out even if it's extremely backlit situation. So that's a handy thing to know that if BLC is on, you can adjust the gain of the shadow portions of the scene. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back by hitting the center button again. And I'll go back one more time, center button again on the camera, to DNR. This is another new menu. DNR is digital noise reduction. This is actually 3 DNR, so it's a time-based noise reduction mode on the camera. Um, it's on high, um, which has the most. You can set it to medium or low or even turn it off. If you have it off, it's going to do no DNR, but it's going to be noisier, but have no motion artifacts. If you put it on high, it's going to have the most DNR, have the least noise, but when there's motion, uh, there's going to be blur. So you have to decide on that. It's related to the digital slow shutter. An 8x shutter is going to have a lot of motion blur. In DNR, a high DNR is going to have you know, more ghosting or motion blur if there's motion. However, if there's very slow motion in a very dark scene, you probably want to leave 8x slow shutter on and you want to leave DNR to high because it's going to give you the most information in the picture. It's going to give you the best quality picture. Uh, the next menu is the day-night control. Um, it has an auto mode, it has a night mode, and it has a day mode. Auto means that it's going to go into night mode at night and day mode during the day. Makes sense. 
The day mode, I mean the night mode, um, you, you notice the camera turned black and white there. Night mode is going to fix it in nighttime mode all the time. So it's going to have the DNR on, the slow shutter on, and it's going to be black and white all the time. Day mode is the opposite. That means 24 hours a day it's going to stay in color. So if you want color in dim light and as the light gets lower and lower and lower, leave it in day mode. The camera will stay in color the entire day and the entire night as well. Once again, the default for that is auto. So it'll switch back and forth, black and white at night, color during the day. Um, there's a sync menu item. Uh, this camera is DC powered, so it has internal sync. Um, you can set line lock. Um, if the camera has a uh, AC power source, like a 24 volt AC power source, you can see that there's uh, there's a menu back there. So I'll go ahead and hit enter again, and this allows me to adjust the vertical phase. This will, if uh, if you line lock a camera, it's going to stop color roll. However, the whites may not be white because the circuit that you um, that you locked it to might be out of phase with the circuit that the camera is using for the monitor. Okay, so the monitor and the camera, or the recorder and the camera might be on different AC circuits. The way you adjust for that is you can change the vertical phase. And if I push the, you know, the left hand button or the right hand button, I can scroll this down to where the white is going to be just the way I like it. Um, once again, you know, I'll back out of that, but you have to make sure you save changes. So that brings me to the last three items here at the bottom of the, set, of the camera setup menu. The first one is save and exit. Um, it's critical that if you change any properties on the camera before you, uh, you leave and you turn the menu off, make sure you save them. That way, those property changes will be written into a permanent flash memory on the camera. And even if the camera loses power in the future, when it boots back up, it'll remember all the changes you made. So it's critical to save your changes. Um, the next, uh, next item here is cancel. That means if you went and changed a bunch of stuff or experimenting with the settings of the camera and you decide you don't like them, um, just hit cancel and everything you did in that session will be erased. It'll go back to where it was before the menu came up. And then finally is default. If someone changed the settings on the camera a year ago or a week ago, save them, but you want to get back to the factory defaults, you hit default, it'll go back to the way the camera was shipped to you. So this is always good so that you can, you can level set the camera to where it was when you bought it. Um, so critical, if you make any changes, make sure you save them. And uh, that's a review of the Seawolf uh, Firmware 7.4 camera setup menu. Thanks a lot.